Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello, welcome back to the channel and welcome to Supercar Shopping here in Dubai. Dubai is the epicenter of epic hypercar showrooms and we're going to be going to see some of the very, very best. Now we're beginning right here beside Sheikh Zayed Road at Altair Motors Ferrari who very kindly allowed me to borrow the keys to this rather stunning 296 GTB to get around town today. What a way to do it ahead of the arrival of my 296 GTS. More on that a little bit later. But today we're gonna head to see the likes of multiple Devos, multiple Venenos. Yes, we are talking plural. So many Bugattis, LaFerraris, other hypercars. There's nowhere else quite like it. So let's hop into the 296 GTB. Let's head around town here in Dubai and go and see what we can find. This is not a bad way to be getting around then. The Ferrari 296 GTB parked here beside Sheikh Zayed Road. This road that runs through the heart of Dubai from downtown with the Burj Khalifa up that away, all the way towards the marina and on to Abu Dhabi. But this is Ferrari's, let's say, entry level supercar, but that's not particularly fair. It gives it a bit of a disservice. We're talking 830 horsepower, thanks to the Piccolo V12, as they call it, the little V12. In fact, the 2.9 or technically three liter twin turbocharged V6 with the electric motor giving 830 horsepower. This particular example is finished in the iconic Rosso Corsa paintwork over the silver wheels, black calipers with the Coyo tan interior. And I liked it so much when I drove it the first time that I went on to order a 296 GTS, the Spider version, but more about that very soon. Today, we're getting around with this. I love the design. I love the look of this car. It is the perfect car for driving today. And here we've got this Coyo, as I said, with the Daytona seat inserts. We've got the carbon fiber LED driver zone. We've got carbon fiber on the central tunnel. We've got the digital screens. But more about that when we're on the road. It is far too hot right here. And there are lots of places for us to go and visit. So let's get this journey started. Huge thanks to Altair Motors Ferrari right here where I visited quite a few times for different events and things, but onwards in the 296. We're all in hybrid mode, but this is where if I press performance on the e Manatino, the engine will start. There we go. It sounds so good for a V6. It's easy to think, oh, it's a V6. How can it be so great? But honestly, my experience of driving in the 296, it is a wonderful, wonderful sound. Hence why it's called the Piccolo V12. Anyway, we're heading out towards our first stop, our first checkpoint of the day to drive a little bit around town with this car today, talk about it a bit more as we go. But I tell you what, it's a car that just offers you a lot, immense power in a wonderful road package. And that's why I've enjoyed it so much as we make our way out. So lift system over here, all the creature comforts you could want for all of the speed bumps off Dubai. Pop that back down. All right, on we go. The 296 is parked up for our first stop right in front of this Suzuki Jimny. Those are so popular out here, fun little cars, but we're beside Shakeside Road to visit the original Dubai hypercar dealership, Allen Class Motors. I first visited their original location this week, 11 years ago, and pronounced them to be the best supercar dealership in the world for good reason. Take a look inside here. We have the Holy Trinity on display. We have numerous hypercars in the most extraordinary of showrooms. Let's go for a whistle stop tour. You can spot the LaFerrari over there, 918 and the McLaren P1, one of 375. This specification in lightning silver with the silver wheels and the navy blue leather and Alcantara interior, very smart, like that a lot. Behind it, the McLaren Senna in the blue with the orange, one of 500 of course, another of McLaren's ultimate series cars, as is the McLaren Elva, one of 149. They're open top Barquetta, this in Papaya Spark, but I want to draw your attention to this car, the Lamborghini Rebenton Coupe, one of only 20 of their few off series cars based on the Mercia Largo. In fact, that's really where it all began. They made 15 roadsters as well. Every one of the 20 is painted in this exact color. The roadsters are in a slightly lighter satin gray paint. Interesting to see them side by side if you ever get the opportunity. Next to that, we have the Mercia Largo SV, my first ever YouTube video 
featured one of these, officially one of 350, but it's known they never made the full set. A lot of people think there are 185 or so of them, but it's actually somewhere around 250, 260. You can see more details on exclusive car registry, but this one in the satin black looking menacing. Behind that, the Mansori Bugatti Veyron Vivere. Look at this car, the satin white with Mansori's square weave carbon fiber over the bonnet, the roof, and the rear sections, the full conversion, including the interior. What a thing. Then on the turntable, the Ford GT Carbon Series. The Carbon Series gives you this dual exposed carbon fiber stripe with the contrast paint also running over the top of the car with the carbon fiber wheels as well. We've got the Mercedes Maybach S600 with the V12, the full land of luxury, a one of 600, a Ventador SV in Rosso Bia. We've got a Lamborghini Huracan Performante. We've got a Porsche 959, predecessor to the Carrera GT, a lovely SLS AMG Roadster, 992 Turbo S convertible. But let's come through and talk about some of these Ferraris just over here. So we come past this 812 GTS. Look at this. I think the paint color is Verde British. Look at the contrast lime green stripe it has running down the front and check out the interior with the red leather finished with the green embroidery for the Cavallino Rampante, the prancing horse in the headrests as well. Porsche 918 Spider, one of 918, the second of our Holy Trinity here at Allen Class Motors. One of my favorites, the Ferrari 599 SA Aperta. There were only 80 of these originally. They made about 130 of them with the removable roof, or in fact, normally with no roof, just a fabric TP effectively. But this has the carbon rails, which you can detach, and a carbon roof panel that sits over the top. We next to that have the 599 GTO, and the SA Aperta effectively borrowed the engine engine from this, the 661 horsepower, 6 litre V12 from the hardcore version of the GTB, one of 599, looking lovely in the Giallo Triplo Strato with the gloss black stripes. We've got an Aventador SVJ Roadster here. I've actually seen this car before, but you've got the painted lime green sections towards the front. You've got this brake line zigzagging across in the gold, and then you have the darker metallic green for the rear sections of the car, and even the carbon fiber Targa roof panels up on the top as well. We then have a Rosso Scuderia SF90 Stradale, slightly more orange than the regular Rosso Corsa. Another Giallo Triplo Strato car, a piece to spider just here next to the LaFerrari, completing the Holy Trinity. One of 500 LaFerraris in the Rosso Corsa with the red leather interior. But all three of those hybrid cars from a decade or so ago now, believe it or not. Before finally on this side, we have the Koenigsegger Gera R in full exposed carbon fiber. I actually filmed this very car eight years ago in London, which is really quite fun. The Agera was the car that I would say really made it for Koenigsegg entering a new level for the company. If we come further through though, quickly to point out, we've got a Haman Mercedes SLR McLaren just here with three exhaust tailpipes on either side before the line of Rolls Royces, the Ghost, Ghost, Phantom and Cullinan and some lovely color schemes. What a place to begin. It has become a bit of a tradition every time I'm out here to go for a spot of supercar shopping just to see what we can find. But I tell you what, driving around in this car, one, it's surprisingly agile doing a U-turn. Two, the AC is doing exactly what we want. Three, there's a wireless charging pad for my phone in a Ferrari, something you wouldn't normally expect. And we're driving on electric power. We're currently in E-Drive, cruising along. And yeah, it's doing a lovely job of it. Obviously, if I then go back into performance, we get that engine back. And that's one thing Ferraris often do though, with the voice recognition, it hears me saying Ferrari and it always pings it up. And that's a little bit frustrating. I get that in my SF90 Stradale all the time as well. Anyway, onwards to the next stop. Parked up here then, and do not fear, it is not touching the curb. I've just been very snug with it to make sure that we could pull up to our next stop here at Q Motors. Now the Q Motors showroom is always filled with Exotica. And inside you will find not one, not two, not three, but four Bugatti Veyrons in a line plus plenty of other incredible cars. Welcome in here at Q Motors. As I said, four Bugattis, a pair of 918s, a pair of P1s, a Gumper Apollo, another Lamborghini Rabenton. Let's take a look around, starting right here, in fact, because this is a very personally familiar car. This Bugatti Veyron Grand Sport Middle East Edition is a car that I've actually driven before. About six or so years ago, I drove this car, waking up in a new Bugatti, over to the Burj Al Arab, the seven-star hotel here in Dubai, with this navy blue exposed carbon, the contrast of the chrome down below, that bright orange interior. I actually remember when it was launched at the Dubai Auto Show as well. They made three Middle Eastern editions, and that was one of them. Next to it, we have this red and black car, more traditional spec. Then we have the car here in the white with the chrome, reminiscent of the Centenaire, 
Carbonata Special Edition before finally the Mansori Vincero with the exposed carbon fiber and that white interior. And in fact, I've driven a Vincero that I would say is identical to this. I'm not sure if it's this exact car or not, but it would be quite fun if it is, as well as the Grand Sport just over that away. Also here, the two 918s, this is a Visac package on the yellow car. The black car just the other side of the center is without the Visac. This particular center is in the satin dark gray, I want to say almost black paintwork, accentuated with these orange accents. We see one of 500 sitting between two of 918. We've got two of 375 with the two McLaren P1s. The silver here with the lower black sections. This SLS black series you might be familiar with. We did a photo shoot with this car, with my GT black series, and with my friend C63 black series, all in solar beam yellow when my car was out here earlier in the year. We've got a P1 carbon series here, one of only five in total, full exposed carbon fiber bodywork. The carbon series represents these red details against the carbon that you can see throughout including that red dashboard top, things like the seat belts, the seat belt clips, the headrest embroidery, the stitching, the calipers, the wheel inserts, the lower details as well. Plus they made further P1s with bespoke and custom exposed carbon bodies. If we come through though, look at all of this. Look at the display of cars here. A feast for the eyes. Come past the line of R8s to point out the Gumpert Apollo. You do not see many Gumpert Apollos. I remember the first time I ever saw one on the road. Unbelievably menacing, full on race car you could say for the road before that was really a thing as it is now this car in the satin black is truly menacing but we have things like pistas and gt2 rs's and a super Legera lp570 loads of rolls royces of different specs the r8s i've taken a look at this 812 gts before as well from ferrari's tailor-made program a pair of stos in fact allow me to squeeze through past the two very different spec STOs where we've got all of the event doors as well because behind is a Lamborghini Reventon. We've now seen two of the 20, another of the Reventon coupes just there. And I point out this event door as well, this LP700. Have a look at the interior of this. The yellow with the blue, that is a bold spec. In fact, almost matching with the color of the LP640 behind the Mercia Largo. As it happens, a pair of SVs, 488s, and the like, if we come through this way, and feast your eyes over this hall in this area. We've got Urus's, Cavani, we've got the Turbo GT in Mansori KN Coupe, we've got the Maybax, we've got everything in here. Nice 458 even just here as well. F12s, AMG GT Black Series, a trio of SLRs, 722, another 722, and a regular SLR Coupe. And I wanna come through this way, past the 430 Spider and the 430 Scuderia to show you this Miura. This is stunning. This car, effectively as new, fully perfect condition. You don't often see cars like that out here, but that has grabbed my attention and a half. A few nice Astons, AMG GTC Roadster. I've seen that car before. There's a GT12 just up there. There's a Cobalt Blue V12 Vantage S. Very nice. But yeah, that is one of the picks of the crop. I think that's 12 hypercars here in the showroom at the moment. Unbelievable. What a display at Q Motors. When you're just hanging out and a random Bugatti Veyron goes by, car spotting in Dubai. Wow. Turn around the other way and here at Nova Luxury Cars, not one, but two Chirons right in front of the doors here. Bugatti Chiron in the satin white. Doors open by magic and then alongside it, the launch spec effectively, the dual tone blue Chiron. Behind that, a Verde Hermes SVJ Roadster, an AMG GT Black Series, and plenty more. But another two Bugattis with one that just drove along the road right in front of me. How unreal is that? This is dealership alley. The elite cars. Oh, there's an Elva, black Elva, a blue SVJ. We'll add the Elva to the hypercar tally for the day just goes on. The next stop is here at the fabulous VIP Motors. Wait until you see the hypercar display around the corner. But before we pop in, I want to show you just outside. There's an AMG GTR Pro, Ferrari F8, Rolls-Royce Cullinan, Urus, Mansori RS6, Wraith, and probably some more things lurking. But let's come on in because inside here are some very, very special cars. Just take a look at the lineup that greets us in front. A Ferrari LaFerrari, Pagani Huayra Roadster, Lamborghini Veneno Roadster, Lamborghini Cian, a second Cian, 
Ferrari Monza SP2, Bugatti Devo, a Chiron behind, 918s, Zagato Vanquish, and so much more to head around and take a look at here at VIP Motors, always with one of the most incredible displays of inventory you could imagine. A LaFerrari in the Rosso Corsa, a Pagani Huayra Roadster, one of the 100 Roadsters, of course, when they took the roof off, the gullwing doors changed to the regular doors, but you get the glass roof panel with the carbon fiber finisher that you take off. You have to leave that at home. It can't be stowed away in the car for the open experience with the V12. Next, a very familiar Veneno Roadster. I actually drove this car about three or four years ago with one of its former owners in London, one of only nine that Lamborghini made following the three coupes, but absolutely the epitome of the Lamborghiniest of Lamborghinis based on the Aventador platform, as is the Sian, Lamborghini's first production hybrid, in fact. The Sian, there are only 63 of them, two of which are right here. This car with the exposed carbon fiber and the green contrast, every car that Lamborghini produced with a different look, different colorway, and then the car behind in the plain satin black, which looks menacing, beyond words. Plain satin black with the satin exposed carbon around some of the details as well. The Monza SP2, right in front of that. Ferrari's first of the Icona series, the SP1 and the SP2, 500 cars in total split, depending on the customer's choices. About two thirds of them are the two seat SP2 configuration, but linking back to the legendary 750 Monza. But if I come through over this away, not only do we have the Hypers, but so many other cars, the SF90, Assetto Fiorano, the 296, the Roma, the Pista Spider, the MC20, plenty more to take a look at. And of course, a Bugatti Devo, a one of 40 Bugatti Devo and this car in the full exposed blue tint carbon fiber. A magnificent thing, an incredibly valuable thing. We're talking in the region of 10 million US dollars, as is the Veneno Roadster, as it happens in that kind of category. This is incredible to be able to see this. But right behind the Devo is a Chiron, and Bugatti have made now, well, they're nearly finished with the full run of 500 Chirons, including the different derivatives, the Chiron, Chiron Sport, Chiron Per Sport, Chiron Super Sport, Chiron Super Sport 300 Plus, of course, making up those numbers often in the dual tone configurations. Another SF90, two Porsche 918 Spiders, the yellow, and then the silver alongside it. It's quite a few SF90s around. Is that a 300 SL I spot back there? 300 SL Gullwing tucked in alongside a trio of AMG GT Black Series. I came here, in fact, when I saw the first customer car, I suppose we could say, that I'd ever seen in the Magma Beam paint. I very much like this British Racing Green 765 LT Coupe. That's a quite nice specification. If I come through this way, you can see we've got all sorts of G63s, Cullinans, Bentleys, you name it, back that way. All of the Ferraris as well in this lineup. But look here, Aston Martin Vanquish Zagato Coupe. They made 99 of those, I believe it is, of the coupes plus the volantes and the shooting brakes. And then they made the even more limited speedsters that came afterwards. McLaren Senna in one of the launch colors right in front. A row of events doors, including four SVJs. The final one of which is an SVJ 63. Just look at that view. Just look at that view for a second. Cian Cian, Veneno, Huayra, LaFerrari, Monza out of this world. We've come past here, past the SVJ Roadster, Coupe Roadster, SVJ 63 Roadster. There are only 63 of these in total with the extra details for Lamborghini's most VIP customers. One of 63. That doesn't mean number one of 63. It means one out of the total of 63 on the plaques. That's the way Lamborghini do it. So always often confusing. And they are very tight with their parking here to fit everything in inside the showroom. My word. That's quite the view. It is Dubai after all. F8 Spider cruising through. We'll hop back in the 296. Welcome to Pupil of Fate, Dubai's newest hypercar showroom, where I came to visit the other day, a completely novel approach with all of the cars spaced out, almost like you're in a lounge, starting with the early 1960s Ferrari 250 GT Berlinetta Lusso, a beautiful thing, but come on through, because the lineup in here is worth a quick look. We have a Mercedes SLR McLaren Crown Edition. They only made 10 of these, delivery mileage, like many of the cars here at Pupil of Fate. In front, we have a pair of McLaren 
speed tails. This particular example is in Synergy Green, but two out of the 106 in total McLaren speed tails are currently here inside this one showroom. The sun is setting just over a cross-shaped Zayed Road, spotting a bright orange Lamborghini Urus heading on by with a Bentley Continental GT giving chase, proof in the pudding that supercars are everywhere, past the second McLaren Speedtail in the navy blue with the silver wheels and lighter interior. We have another Bugatti Chiron, the gloss white with the black C that runs around the door frame, a pair of Ferrari SF90s, Maserati MC20, over this side the Ferrari Monza SP2 in the heritage livery. I don't think I mentioned before the 570S GT4 tucked away in the office just over there, which is pretty cool, a Ferrari 512. We also have the Aston Martin Lagonda Taraf, Aston Martin's hyper luxury saloon vehicle, before we have the 177 Q Series. One of only seven out of the 77 177s. This particular example is another that I have been fortunate enough to find myself driving a few years ago. Two and a bit years ago, I got to drive this particular car as well out here in Dubai. Lovely details with the red carbon mirrors, red interior, red calipers, and even the red exhaust tailpipe that looks just beneath on either side of the diffuser as well, but one of the best looking cars ever. This is Fast Motors, and wait until you see everything inside. The Bugattis over to this side, or the Ferrari hypercars to this side. Thank you very much. Let's head straight on in and come and show you what is here at First Motors. This is jaw-dropping. We have the Devo, a few different derivatives of Chiron, the LaFerrari, Speedtail, Countach, Veneno Roadster, Cyan, P1 GTR, Ford GT just here. If we come on through this way, have a look at some of the Ferraris. We have an F50, a pair of Enzos, two further LaFerraris, a 288, the Mansouri Monza SP2, a Senna up that way, and plenty more to explore around. This is totally totally crazy honestly in fact let's talk about this for a second i believe it is the only mansori monza they've created this package including the exterior carbon fiber the lower lip the inserts on the front grille side skirts new mirror caps if we come around towards the back similarly with the diffuser back here a bespoke package i have actually seen this car myself before in germany but it was very much off camera at that stage when it was a work in progress so it's amazing to see the finished product we have a ferrari 288 gto the first of ferrari's hypercars then we have a la ferrari aperta of course just over 200 of those for ferrari's 70th anniversary and it was introduced back in 2017 the la ferrari coupe the enzo the black enzo alongside the yellow enzo and a lovely blue 509 gto sitting just between them if we come through and around this is where we have the f50 followed by the 16m of which they're only 499 celebrating ferrari's 16th formula one world championship title over on this side the mclaren p1 gtr sits in front of a 722s sits in front of the mansori renovatio this carbon bodied mercedes slr mclaren then we have the brava stealth that i filmed about 10 years ago always fun to see this exact car again a line of different specs of the AMG GT Black Series. We have a McLaren Senna. This is actually in a colour called Burton Blue, which is not named after me, believe it or not, despite the fact that I do own a blue Senna. But this particular car, I have ridden on board before, so it's amazing to see that one again right here in the showroom. If I come through this way, I want to pick out a car that stands out to me from a mile away, and that is this magnificent SF90 Stradale Assetto Fiorano in Viola, Hong Kong. This purple paintwork with all of the yellow details obviously the emblems, the calipers, the center caps, the Assetto Fiorano stripe around the front leading that silver edge. I would probably go for silver wheels against the dark paint color like this myself but this is stunning. A few further SF90s but then we have a Cyan in the bright very citrus lime yellow we could say. This car again one of the 63 then next to that another of the Veneno Roadsters the full carbon car that I've also seen a few times over the years another one of the nine. We come to the Lamborghini Countach one of 112 the Countach being released to link back to commemorate the original prototype 50 years on again the latest of Lamborghini's few off hypercars another McLaren Speedtail the white car here with the black upper canopy in a showroom that is just littered with epic cars f12 tdf i'm spotting a viola ophelia lamborghini hurricane up towards the end there quite an intriguing color after we've got the mercy sv and the two sto's as well if we come back this way 
yellow LaFerrari Coupe, the grey LaFerrari Aperta, that's really standing out. Chiron, 110 years, the 110 anniversary car they introduced recently. Then we have the Chiron Supersport 300 Plus to celebrate reaching 304.77 miles per hour. They produced this limited edition with the orange livery over this very dark tinted exposed carbon fiber on the Chiron Supersport before, of course, the regular, if you can call them that, Supersport models as well. We've got another Chiron 110 year anniversary car here as well. The special thing about these is the matching of the exposed carbon finish with the paint in exactly the same shade the way they link together and fit perfectly before we have the Bugatti Devo this particular Devo in that much brighter satin blue with the exposed black carbon fiber sections below but a second of the 40 I don't really know where to begin with this there must be nearly 20 hypercars in this single display this single showroom this is the final of the special editions of the Ford GT as it happens as well. So you can see with this paint scheme that runs around the bodywork, this is really, I mean, just jaw dropping, to be honest. I'm not even sure if I mentioned the P1 GTR, one of only 50 or so that they made of those in total in the end. It's out of this world, this, the cars here. I, I'm, I'm very, very, very speechless as I look around this room. By my count, we have seen something like 60 hypercars this afternoon. And that doesn't include going to Emirati One Motors, who I know have a Devo and a LaFerrari Aperta. We've not even been out to some of the dealers in the Alawea area, like Topline Motors, who I always love to visit. It's crazy to think of the concentration of these kind of cars here in Dubai, let alone everything else that's inside showrooms like this. We've just taken a look at some of the really standout hypercars, but there are so many other cars beyond that, the Lambos, the Ferraris, all the different types of supercars. But to get around in the 296, like I said, the first time I ever drove a 296, it was straight after that that I was like, I've got to order one of these. I've got to order a 296 GTS because it's such a different character to my SF90 Stradale, but such a fun car. I honestly think that this is the best supercar that you can currently order, that you can currently buy. The engine, the feel, the emotion of it at sensible speeds. They've not tried too hard to make something that is so track focused that it's actually just uncomfortable in normal driving. It's comfortable, it's engaging midway through the rev range. You don't need to be at the red line. It's got a comfortable, fairly soft setup. You can order the Assetto Fiorano if you'd like them automatic dampers, which firm up the ride, but do away with the lift system. But what we've been driving around in it today, using the hybrid system, it just happens in the background. It just does what it wants to do. You're not sitting there worrying. You can change driving modes for fun, but you're not worrying about what it's doing. The car just takes over. If you're in regular E-Drive, obviously it's fully electric. If you're in hybrid, which is the mode it starts in, it will use up the battery power until it needs to run the combustion engine effectively to keep it going, or if you ask the car for a little bit more power. If you go to performance mode, it will keep the battery topped up, or if you go all the way to qualifying mode, you have 100% power, 830 horsepower, all to the rear wheels, and it's just a really, really good thing. You've also got a plentiful amount of space up front. You can daily this thing, and I'm sure I'm gonna be dailying my 296 GTS when the time comes, and I very much look forward to it. And I tell you what, in a line of other cars, with a GT3 RS, with a Cullinan and a Maybach, it blends very well in, doesn't it? It absolutely is the path. I say it blends in, it's the one that stands out. It's by far the most pretty looking thing as well. So yes, enjoyed getting around with this today. A big thanks to Ferrari Middle East, and of course also to Altair Motors Ferrari. We've seen some awesome, awesome things today, but I've come full circle to hopping back in this to head on home because it's the right car for the purpose. That's it for this time though. Thank you very much for watching as always, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this supercar shopping here in Dubai. Do comment which of all of the cars we've seen you would choose to take home if given the opportunity to go for a drive in any one of them. That's it for now though. Thanks again, and I'll see you soon. Cheers.